Our next speaker, uh, Brad Campolarian. He is a partner at, uh, at Alley Interactive, and they work with, well, and before I forget to mention, he's visiting here from uh, New York City, and uh, so we appreciate him making that, making that trek from New York City. And Alley Interactive uh, works with big publishers, uh, Politico, the New York Post, and today uh, Brad is going to be talking about code review and why exactly that matters. So, uh, Brad, the time is yours. Thanks. How's everybody doing? Good? All right. Um, so, yeah, I'm here today to talk about code review and how it's an integral part of what we do. And I'm going to actually walk through um, a lot of our process and how we do it. And, you know, hopefully it'll be inspirational or informative, um, you know, for, the, for your own processes and, and your own, like, development life cycle. Um, I even see some people in this room whose code I have reviewed. Uh, so. Um, so I'm going to start with the history of, of how code review has gone at Alley Interactive over the years. And, you know, really our relationship with, with code review as an integral part of our software development process started because of our relationship with WordPress VIP. Um, for those of you who've worked with WordPress VIP, you'll know that every single line of code that you push gets reviewed by them. So it was only natural for us to review every single line of code before we pushed it to them. And, you know, and that was the impetus you know, about four years ago um, to require that every single line of code that we ship um, gets reviewed before we ship it. Um, so let's talk about our process. You know, code, code review is a major part of our daily workflow at Alley Interactive. Um, just to throw out a few stats, I personally have performed 3,800 code reviews since 2014, which is when we started keeping stats. As a company, we've done over 21,000 to date, um, which is a pretty staggering amount of code. I have no idea how many lines of code it is, but it's a lot. Um, and you know, the most basic reason we do it, of course, is to maintain code quality. Um, you know, I think some people were resistant to it at first because they felt that it was a barrier to fast deployment, but you'll thank yourself a lot later um, for having fewer bugs in your code. Uh, but there are some deeper reasons why we do it as well. It, you know, it boosts collaboration. Um, code review is not only done between people that are working on the same team. Um, code review can be done by anyone working on any project. Um, it's the most common, like, everyday way uh, by which how knowledge is shared across projects across the entire company. Um, and we encourage people to be complementary in addition to critical, you know, don't just highlight the bugs, don't just highlight the mistakes, highlight when someone does something really awesome too. Um, you know, it's how we share knowledge. Um, it is by far the most valuable experience for new team members when they join our team. You know, you can give somebody all the documentation, all the standards to read in, in the world, but they'll never truly learn uh, until they're actually writing code and talk, and you're talking with them about actual things they've done. And you yourself can learn from reviewing someone else's code. You know, you can learn new things, new techniques, you know, new ideas. Um, it's absolutely our best way to share knowledge. Um, so let's talk about how we actually do code review. I think this is, you know, pretty interesting to me. Um, you know, it's a process that's evolved over the last few years, and I'm going to talk about where we're at today. Um, so I'll start with peer review, um, since this is how we started, and I think it's, you know, by far the most you know, important form of code review that we do, um, you know, peer reviewing someone else's code. And there are great tools to facilitate this, and I'm sure that, you know, everyone has their own method, their own tools to use, and I'll talk about how we do it. Um, and there are two main tools that facilitate our code review process. Um, the first one is actually Slack. And the little, the little guy next to Slack is our in-house Slack bot, uh, which we call Alibot. And he hangs around and he listens for new code reviews in every single project channel, as well as a dedicated company-wide code review channel. And you know, just to give you a closer look, uh, I've blurred out some really sensitive things to protect the innocent. Um, but this is our company-wide code review channel. And what you can see is that every single review that pops up just goes into a Slack channel and people can go grab them. So if we zoom in a little closer, you know, we made it easy. So all someone has to do um, to ask for a code review is just drop a link to a pull request in the code review channel, and the bot just instantly creates a queue. And there's always just an ongoing queue of all the pull requests that are available. Uh, we also show 
you know, how many files are involved, what types of files are involved, so like front-end developers or back-end developers know which code reviews they might be best suited for, uh, since our team is multidisciplinary. Um, and to grab a code review, you just say, I'm on it, you know, and you just you know, give a little piece of the, the name of the pull request, and then the, the, the bot assigns it to you, and, we, and somebody knows that you're reviewing their code. Um, and there's, here's another example. You, know, you can see a more complicated pull request with lots of files. Um, you can even do on star, and the animated tornado emoji sweeps through and assigns you the entire queue. So you don't get to, doing, you don't get to 3,800 reviews like I did by doing one at a time. Um, and then we also have integrations that automatically direct message developers once your code review is complete. So you, know, um, you don't have to keep checking to see if it's done. You know, the, the bot just lets you know. And we're big fans of using emoji to indicate approval. Our favorite is the horse. It's actually on the back of my shirt. Um, so the unofficial mascot of Valley Interactive. Um, so I think it's pretty clear from seeing all those screenshots what the other tool is that we use to facilitate code review, uh, and that, of course, is GitHub. Uh, and I think that's probably um, you know, not a surprise to anyone. Um, GitHub is the primary place that we do all of our peer code review. Um, and their pull request interface has always been great uh, for going through code line by line and leaving inline comments. Um, but what I love is that recently, they finally formalized the adoption of code review right into the pull request process. And you know, just to show you how we recommend setting it up, you know, now under branches, you can set up a protected branch um, usually your master branch, and you can force people to have to get a review before they merge, even administrators. Um, you might turn it off in the case of extreme emergency, but it better be something pretty bad. Um, and you can also require status checks with continuous integration software like Travis, but I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, so, you know, to look at what an actual review looks like, um, you know, in a normal day at Alley Interactive, you know, here's a pull request in GitHub, and you can see by those two red X's, you know, we're, it's indicating we have a protective branch. So that means like someone has to get a review before this can be merged. So you go to your files tab and, and you look at the changes. So here's a really simple pull request. I, I made a bunch of simple examples for this talk. Um, but there are a couple items to consider here, right? So to start a review, you just click on any line, you pop up a box, you start typing, and you submit your first comment and, and start the review. Um, and all your comments get marked as pending until you're complete. And you know, here, you can see I've completed review and there's a couple comments. And uh, you know, I found some things that I have a problem with in this code. You know, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's a little inefficient and, and there's some formatting issues too. Um, and then you, know, you just ship the review back to the reviewer. And in this, in this, in this case, I'm requesting changes instead of approving. And you, know, you, can, you can just start your discussion. Um, so, and then the code, and then it's, you know, it's up to the person that submitted the pull request to go back and read the comments make their updates, um, and then I can go back and click Approve Changes you know, once they actually go back and fix what I commented on. Um, and you can see now it's approved. You know, they made the changes I requested. Um, but there's still that little yellow circle in the middle. Um, so what's that? Um, well, code reviews aren't just for humans. And there's lots of things that computers are actually way better at reviewing than people. And that takes, us to take, takes me to the second thing that we do, which is a lot of automated testing. And automated testing is, in fact, a form of code review. Um, there are definitely steps that can be automated, and let's talk about some of the tools we use for that. Um, so what you saw in the last screenshot is actually a tool called Travis. It's a continuous integration service that's directly integrated into GitHub. Um, and Travis facilitates automatically running tests every time you submit a pull request. And you know, here's the same pull review screen we showed before, but this time I'm gonna highlight something in particular and you can see that, as before, the pull request is blocked from merging because it needs a review, but also because Travis is running some automated tests. And it can run any sort of custom tests that you, that you want. We really recommend that developers um, create unit tests for everything that they build, every theme, every plugin, um, you know, test, devising tests for the smallest testable parts of their code. And that ensures when you release new code later, you're not breaking something that you already um, had working before and it's really easily configured in GitHub. Um, and oops, see, we have a failed test, and now we're blocked. Um, so, but in this instance, it's actually not a custom unit test, but another thing you could easily configure as part of your workflow called PHPCS, or PHP Code Sniffer. And this takes a lot of the tedium out of code reviews for us, uh, because it can look for things, basic coding standards, that are easily definable as a rule set. 
Um, and a rule set for WordPress is actually built right into PHP CS. Um, so it can literally be set up in like three lines of code, and then automatically you can check for all kinds of standards and not have a human being have to do it, um, which you can see here. And you can see we failed a test in WordPress. So what did, what did we fail? And it shows all kinds of errors. There's missing PHP doc, missing spaces, incorrect spacing. And you know, now the developer can go back and fix all of these things before they even ask for, for a peer review. Um, so you know, setting this up only takes a little bit of code in your theme, but it saves people a ton of time in the whole code review process. You know, here's the sad looking code that failed that test, but if we fix it up, now it's beautiful. Um, and then Travis reruns the test, and we fixed our issues, and now we can ask for a peer review. Um, so, and the peer reviewer will know that all the basics have already been handled by PHP CS, and their job becomes much easier. So that takes me back around to the, to the topic of the talk, of course, which is why is code review important? Why does it matter? And I think where the best way to explain that is, you know, what do we look for? Like, what are we actually looking for when we do a peer review? So, you know, I've showed you the tools. I, I, I've talked about automated testing. But let's dig deeper into the kind of things that you actually discover through peer review and why code review is so important to your process. Um, you know, the first thing, obviously, is standards. You know, we want our code to follow standards. We want any developer to be able to pick up, you know, any repository and have it look the same, follow a standard format, adhere to WordPress standards, adhere to WordPress VIP standards. Now, this stuff is pretty well handled by automated tools, but our peer reviewers are looking for three big things beyond that. Now, the first one being performance. Um, obviously, you want your sites to run fast. You want your code to be performant. You don't want your site to crash. Um, you don't want someone like Josh from Pantheon calling you and telling you that your site's slow and bringing down the infrastructure. Um, so, you know, so let's look, go back and look at my last example. Um, you know, and there's actually a far darker issue hi hidden in that pull request. Um, so, it actually, that function, that the sample function I created, was running a meta query. And running a meta query with a not like condition, which can be really, really expensive on a big database with lots of meta values. If that function was being run a lot and was uncached, it could bring your site down. Now, an automated, fun an automated tool might not notice that, but a human reviewer can flag it and be like, hey, you probably should cache that function or you're going to bring your site down under traffic. Um, so you know, here, you, here you can see the reviewer made a comment. Someone went back, added caching to that function. Now it's great. Safe to merge. Security is, is, the, is the second big thing that our peer reviewers look for as well. Uh, and that really has two big components, which are sanitization and escaping. You know, think of one as input and the other as output. You know, ensure the data you're putting into your site is valid and ensure you're displaying the right kind of data to your site's visitors. And you know, let's look at a couple examples of that too. You know, here's a simple example of missing sanitization. You know, this is a function that's running on a saved post hook, it's writing a meta value to the database. But you know, what if a, a hacker sent you a malicious post request that had unsafe data? You know, if you're not sanitizing that input, you know, you could write something very bad into your database. So, you know, we update it, um, you know, through code review to use sanitized text field, this checks for all kinds of nasty data, you know, strips, tags, et cetera, and now we can approve it. Um, you know, and here's an example on the other end of missing output escaping. You know, in this instance, we're outputting the same meta value to a web page. And of course, we're expecting it to be a text value, but you know, what if later someone updates this value to store HTML instead, and all of a sudden it breaks the layout of the page? What if your database gets hacked and, and a hacker puts you know, a script tag in this meta value and now you're serving you know, an, a, a malicious script to all your site's visitors? So you know, by wrapping this in escape HTML, we ensure that this, this particular value will always output text and we don't have to worry about it later. Um, you know, and these are all like super small examples, but you know, any real code review is made up of hundreds of lines of code potentially with little examples like this all throughout where you can make a tiny mistake that causes a really big problem later. And it's really important to have things peer reviewed. Um, and there's PHP CS rule sets that check for this stuff too. And some of this stuff actually can be automated. Um, but what can't be automated is optimization. And that's really the last big thing we're looking for in code review. And you might think this is like a little duplicative of performance, but it's not. And you know, what I mean by optimization is finding a better way to do something. Um, you know, and this is where an experienced programmer, an experienced reviewer can offer really valuable feedback to another developer. And you know, these are the things that's really hard for an automated process to catch. And 
you know, maybe the code is performant. Maybe the code is perfectly safe as is. But is there a better way to do it? You know, this could be as simple as catching someone, you know, writing a function that's already handled by WordPress core. Maybe they didn't know it existed. You know, here's another example. You know, and, and here's a bit of code that at first, it might look perfectly valid and perfectly fine. It's hard to see instantly what's going on here. But when you look closer, you know, you realize that, well, wait a minute, there's a query running here, but later we check the, for, for if the user has a certain capability before we even return the data. So why not check that first and then not run the query if we don't have to? You know, this is the kind of stuff that you can't teach a PHP CS rule set. You can't teach really a unit test to check for. You know, this is the stuff that you get benefit from a human being reviewing your code. And you know, the, this is the biggest thing that I think we benefit from on a daily basis, is just having um, you know, people check these things and make sure that we are fully optimized. And, and, the, and the result is cleaner, more efficient code. And, and again, you know, these are a handful of small examples, but every code review is made up of a handful of little examples that lead to us producing a better product. Uh, and there are also examples of this you know, all throughout the WordPress community. Um, you know, the WordPress community is made of a ton, of, you know, of, 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 there's tons of examples of code review happening on a regular basis. You know, we already touched on WordPress VIP, um, WordPress core itself, I, I like to think that every line of code in WordPress core has been peer reviewed, but maybe not. Um, and <laughs> I see some people laughing in the back. Um, and WordPress.org has, you know, theme and plugin review teams that are actively re reviewing you know, new themes and new plugins that are submitted. I mean, this is keeping sites safe for the tens of millions of people that use WordPress that don't know how to write code. Um, you know, code review is behind everything that we do and, and, and the WordPress community in general. Um, <clears throat> but I'm sure this leads to a question that's on some of your minds, uh, which is, you know, I've been talking about teams and our process for, for all this entire time, but, you know, what if you work alone? How do you integrate code review into your workflow if you work alone? And this is a challenging question, right? Um, and the first thing that I suggest is, you know, open source, right? Make your process, make your project open source if possible. You know, get people interested in your project early on. Build a community of people that work together and can peer review each other's, co each other's code. Um, you know, get involved in the WordPress community. You know, help review some themes and plugins. It might not help you with your project, but you're going to learn from it, and you'll bring stuff back to your own work from that. Um, another one that might not be so obvious, hire somebody. People will review your code as a paid service. I'm sure there are people in this room that will actually do it. Um, we've even tossed around the idea of starting a code review community. I think of it kind of like Uber for code review, <laughs> where you can like hire a reviewer, and they have like a star rating, and it's a whole thing. If you're interested, talk to me after this. Uh, it, it's, it's in its infancy. Um, and read. You know, just read. There are lots of great resources out there for you um, to help educate yourself. You know, there are, you know, WordPress coding standards. If you've never read them, please read them. Uh, they, they explain a lot of what we do. Um, there are WordPress.org, you know, theme and plugin review handbooks and communities. Um, for WordPress VIP, you know, there's um, some coding standards that they publish that are public. I really suggest their basic code review what we look for document if you've never read it. It'll really help you think about WordPress coding standards in a whole new level. You know, even if we're not developing a site for VIP, we use those same standards for every single site because they're awesome and you know, they really make your code much more rock solid. Um, check out all the tools that I mentioned. Make them part of your process. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be around. Um, obligatory we're hiring slide. And thank you.